Hello everyone and welcome back to Fantasy Forge. I'm Cameron Holt and today we're going to be making some Halloween themed dice with candy corn and candy corn colors. It's been a second since my last video because I've been a very very busy boy. Between running the social media and writing the games over at twitch.tv slash arcanorama for our D&D live show, making dice and building sets, it's been a lot of work. But it's also been a great time. If you like what you see in this video and you enjoy the dice that come out of it, you should join us over at twitch.tv slash arcanorama. We're live every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and we give away a free set of Fantasy Forge dice in every single episode. My favorite set from this episode is actually going to be given away on October 30th, which gives you plenty of time to hop over to our YouTube page, I'll leave a link in the description below, to catch up on our episodes. But for now, let's make some dice. For the more traditional set, I'm using these candy corn colors. For the white, I've got a glittery pearlex powder, and for the orange and yellow, I'm using mica powders. They should be lovely. For the experimental set, I've got this actual candy corn that I've chopped up into manageable pieces that should hopefully fit into the molds. I've also got these larger pumpkin-shaped candy corns that I'll try getting into the Jumbo D20, as well as this squishy gummy brain that's just dying to be used for a Mind Flayer die. I started by prepping my workspace with my homemade molds. I've already talked about how I made these in a previous video that you can watch here if you're curious. I set out the cups that I'll need for the different colors of resin, with the pipettes I'll use to inject the molds. And then the different colorants that'll go into each cup. I've also got some popsicle sticks to stir, and as always, gloves... ...and a respirator for safety. I started by shoving all of the candy into the molds, but beware. If you're trying this at home, I'd recommend filling the molds with resin first and then inserting the fillings. I'll show you why that is later on. With the mold stuffed, it's time to mix up some resin. For my process of making four full sets of dice and three jumbo d20s, I found that it takes me about eight ounces of resin for a full batch. That generally leaves me enough wiggle room for any mistakes or spills I may make along the way. Mix the resin until it's clear with no visible streaks, which usually takes anywhere from 3 to 5 minutes depending on your stirring implement and the veracity with which you mix the goo. Since all of my dice this round have a clear base, I go right in with the pipettes so I can start injecting the molds. Again, I'd recommend just pouring the resin into the molds and then adding the candies. We'll get to why in just a minute. For the jumbo dice, I inject the molds with pipettes, but when I got to the candy corn sets, the resin was already beginning to get hot, so I knew my workable window was quickly shutting. I decided to just pour carefully instead for these, which could have led to some horrific bubbles if I didn't have a pressure pot. But as you'll see, our problems lie elsewhere. The traditional sets are made just like I would any other set. I pour the base color, in this instance clear, into the molds,
Then use the pipettes to swirl the colored resin inside of that, giving a beautiful galaxy-like effect. Even with a pressure pot, you can still end up with bubbles occasionally, so I like to do a quick pass with a lighter to pop any surface bubbles that I can before adding a little extra resin to the caps and gently squishing the molds closed. After a 7 hour stint in the pressure pot at 40 psi, our sweet and spooky children are ready to be revealed. And don't forget those satisfying peelies. Here's the first look at why you should fill the mold with resin first. There were portions of the gummy brain that were pressed against the sides of the mold, which kept resin from covering those areas, leaving some exposed brains, er, uh, candy, and rendering this dye as a failed experiment. At first glance, the rest of the candy corn dye looked great. Probably pretty unbalanced, but not a terrible looking decorative set. I was actually incredibly pleased with the candy corn bunch. That is, until a few days later, when I noticed that the dice were leaking gooey sugar guts. I'll probably give these dice another go in the future to see if I can work around this unfortunate outcome, but I did still manage to get two gorgeous sets of candy corn themed dice out of this pour. I'm going to be giving away this gorgeous Halloween theme set on our D&D Twitch stream over at twitch.tv slash arcanorama on Saturday, October 23rd. Give us a follow through the link in the description to get notified when we go live for your chance to win. We give away a set of handmade Fantasy Forge dice every week, so come join us. What color do you think I should paint the numbers on this set? Orange? Yellow? White? All three? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see all of you in the next video. But until then, stay safe out there, adventurers.